I want to welcome you to Sanctifying Truth. This is Brother Mike Brown. This will be episode 29 of sanctifyingtruth.org. If you'd like to learn more about us, you can go there to the Podbean website where all of our episodes will be found. And also we have a Facebook page named Saved Man. You can find it with a capital S, lowercase, rest of the letters, Saved Man. This will be March the 4th, 2019. We thank God for this another opportunity to be able to bring the blessed old book that we hold in our hands. We believe from the beginning to the end. The authorized King James Bible of 1611. We thank God for it. It's our mother. It gave us life. James chapter 1 verse 18. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth that we should be made a, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Peter said being born again not of corruptible seed but incorruptible by the word of God which liveth and abideth forever. And this is the word whereby the gospel is preached unto you. My friend, this is the life-changing word, the book that will change your life and give you a life worth living. It's the book that God wrote and the devil hates. That's the reason he's had it rewritten, to confuse the simple-minded. My friend, you won't go wrong with God's book. And I'll remind you that we just had F3-rated devastating tornadoes in three counties in our state yesterday here in Alabama. Yesterday afternoon, beginning at about 2.30 in Lee, Barber, and Autauga counties, there were at least 23 people killed and many more injured and lost their homes. I saw a video of a black woman who was sitting in the rubble of her mobile home, calling on Jesus. Listen, my friend, when all you have left is the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll realize that he's all you need. I'd ask you to pray for all those families that have been devastated. My friend, it's a, it's, a, it's a mess. You can go online and look at the videos of it. It's a mess. Yesterday morning in church, just as our pastor, Brother David Wood, was preparing to preach, the power flickered. It went off for about a second and came right back on. And my friend, we resumed our worship of the Lord Jesus Christ. But I'm just saying, the Bible declares, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. It could have been us that were wiped out. It could have been you. My friend, you need to prepare to meet God, because today is all we have to live for Him, not tomorrow. We always live for today. And you might want to go back up and uh, pull up that episode I did titled Today. Now, on a lighter note, we are thankful for this day that the Lord hath made for our granddaughter, Lauren Harvey, to bring her son, Cohen, into the world. She's at the hospital in Boaz, Alabama, as we speak. Cohen will be Judy and my second great-grandson, and we praise God's holy name for this. We've already been blessed with our first great-grandson, Sawyer Graves, and eight grandchildren. And so far, all who have come to the age of accountability have professed faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And for this, we bless God's holy name. Noah Campbell was just baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost yesterday.
bless his holy name. Now we're resuming Paul's swan song today. This will be part four of Paul's swan song. Since these are the last words spoken to the immediate church of Paul's day around A.D. 66, he is addressing Timothy for the last time and he references at least 14 others by name in this chapter and all the brethren, verse 21. So my friend, this applies to the church age of today. The Apostle Paul, by the Holy Spirit of God, is speaking directly to us, all the brethren. We should pay close attention to every word of God spoken in this chapter. Every salient verse is pregnant with milk for the newborn babe in Christ and strong meat to those that are of full age, able to digest the strong meat of the word. We should especially pay attention, not necessarily to those things that exhort us, they are good, but to the warnings and watchwords of this great chapter. We are no doubt living out the days of the great falling away that Paul warned would come in the last days of the church age. But my friend, you don't have to be part of it. God still has a Bible-believing remnant as he has always had throughout the ages. But the majority, unfortunately, will be devoured by the Laodicean spirit and be ashamed at the judgment seat of Christ if you're truly born again by the Spirit. There are still some Philadelphian-type churches that manifest the characteristics of the church at Philadelphia in Revelation chapter 3, but they are few and far between. My friend, when you read of those seven churches of Asia Minor, Revelation chapter 2 and 3, they are seven distinct local churches, but they all have characteristics of different time elements and eras in the church age. And we are now living the Laodicean church age, the last church that the Apostle John addresses in Revelation chapter 3, and we have the Lord Jesus Christ on the outside of the physical building, knocking at the heart's door of the individuals on the inside of that building, wanting to be let into their heart. My friend, I ask you, is he in your heart, or is he on the outside knocking, wanting to be let in? Just like that song says, who is that knocking, calling, seeking? Who is that troubling my soul? Surely tis Jesus, asking, pleading, wanting to make me whole. He wants to make you whole, friend. Now we were looking at 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3 and 4 on our last episode, and we will resume there. If you have access to the blessed old book, I would ask you to get get it and follow along. And do like the Bereans of the Apostle Paul's day. In Acts chapter 17, verse 11, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they, the Bereans, received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures when daily, whether those things were so, check me out, get the book out, and find out if I'm telling you the truth. John 5, 39, our Lord Jesus Christ in the red letter words during the days of his flesh said, search the scriptures, a commandment, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me, and you will not come to me that you might have life. My friend, have you come to the Lord Jesus Christ?
Have you repented of your sins and received him as your Lord and Savior? If not, my friend, perhaps today the Holy Spirit of God will speak to your heart and he will have mercy on you and give you repentance and faith to call upon Almighty God and receive his darling Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, as your very own personal Savior. Now, refusing to hear God's words results in the great falling away, the apostasy of the church, with the Lord Jesus Christ on the outside of the church, knocking at individuals' hearts, wanting to be let in. And we read, turn with me to 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2, and we'll take up there verse number 3. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse number 3, the Bible says, Let no man deceive you by any means. My friend, they're working every means under the sun. They're not missing an opportunity to deceive you. For that day, the day of Christ, the second coming, shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, the Antichrist. The only other one called the son of perdition was Judas Iscariot, who, according to the Lord Jesus Christ in John 6, verse 70, was a devil who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that uh, is worshipped, so that he as God, there's Isaiah 14, Ezekiel 28, sitteth in the temple of God, the rebuilt uh, tribulation temple, showing himself that he is God. And let me add this to you, my friend. The uh, Jewish Temple Institute are prepared with everything to resume the Old Testament Levitical sacrifices. They have prepared everything for the temple to be rebuilt. All they need is that real estate uh, to be wiped clean of one of those buildings of the Muslims, and it's coming. And this Antichrist will see it in that temple that will be built on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, and he will show himself that he is God. And my friend, if you refuse and rebel against God Almighty and his truth, you will receive him as God. John chapter 5 and verse 43 the Lord Jesus Christ said, I am come in my Father's name, and you received me not. If another, the Antichrist, shall come in his own name, him you shall receive. Remember ye not that when I was with, yet with you, I told you these things. And now you know what withholdeth, what's holding back, what's a preventing that he might be revealed in his time. Tribulation period. Daniel's 70th week. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let. He, the Holy Spirit of God will hinder until he, the Spirit of God, be taken out of the way at the rapture of the church. First Thessalonians chapter 4. And then shall that wicked be revealed, w, capital W, the Antichrist, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, lying miracles, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth 
that they might be saved. Now, I want you to listen to me real close, my friend. Laodicean terminology is accept, not receive. We receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. That is the biblical terminology of the King James Bible. Check me out, John chapter 1, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Over and over and over. Get your concordance out. Look the word up, receive and received and receiveth. And look up the word accept. We do not accept God's free gift. We receive it and him gleefully and gladly. Because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. They refused and rebelled. They pulled away the shoulder and they stopped their ears from hearing the truth because they wanted to live for their flesh and this present evil world. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie from the Antichrist, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. In these last days, the characteristic of it, one of them, his men are lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning, get it, chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. That's the only way, my friend, you'll get your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life sanctification of the Spirit when you repent of your wicked sins and belief of the truth. That's all it takes. Good works are worthless. They'll damn you to hell. Isaiah said, but we are all as an unclean thing and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags compared to the righteousness of God. My friend, Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 25, Paul says, See that you refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth, Mount Sinai, but now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. Psalm 103, verse 20. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Not his miracle, not his works, but the voice of his word. My friend, you need to listen up to God's Word, His book, and allow His Holy Spirit to make God's Word real to you. 2 Peter 1.19, we have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn. And the day star, the Lord Jesus Christ, arise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Peter says, We have a more sure word of prophecy than God Almighty speaking from Mount Sinai in the presence of Moses and the children of Israel. Mark eight thirty eight. Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words 
in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Now in Second Timothy chapter 4 and verse 5, Paul says, But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. That's the commandment given to the young pastor, Timothy. And my friend, we can apply it to our own lives spiritually if you are not a pastor. God expects each and every child of God to be a, an evangelist to this world. I'll be a bold, spirit-filled witness. He said in Acts chapter 1-8, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me. Now verse number 5, he says to watch, that is to be sober, to be calm and collected in spirit, temperate, dispassionate, circumspect, 1 Timothy 5, 6 says, But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. My friend, the Bible says, If ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Paul adds, Endure afflictions. The fake Laodicean church cannot even endure sound doctrine, much less afflictions. Christian, if you are ever planning to do anything as far as service for your Lord, you may as well prepare to suffer in your body. It's a known fact revealed in the New Testament. That's just the way it is. I'm sorry to be the one to... Uh, report to you. You're going to suffer hardships, troubles, and afflictions for beginners in the flesh, and your Lord is going to allow it, yea, and even cause it to get the world, the flesh, and the devil out of you in order that he might put you out on the front lines in the battle just like he did with young David before Goliath. Psalm 132 and verse 1, Lord, remember David and all his afflictions. God knows right where you're at, child of God. He knows every ache and pain, affliction and disease that's in our body. And guess what? He's allowing it. Don't let these hucksters tell you that God wants you to be in perfect health. All they're after is your money. Sow your seed into their ministry for a hundredfold return. Right? Right. Guess what, my friend? They all die. Mr. Piggy died. Kermit's died. Psalm 119, verse 67, Before I was afflicted, David said, I went astray, but now have I kept thy word. Well, listen, my friend, you may not necessarily go astray into deep sin, but we all have an old Adamic nature that must be subdued. And the only way it can be subdued is by the Holy Spirit and by the Holy Bible working in us, both the will and the do of His good pleasure. And you can read the words of the living God. Every man in there that was used by God had physical affliction. You can read church history. The men of God have bodily physical maladies and afflictions, my friend, to keep them humble, to look to God, and you will too. Second Timothy 6, 3, giving no offense in anything, that the ministry be not blamed, 
but in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of God. Notice, in much patience, in afflictions, Paul says, in necessities. He was a tent maker. He went around making tents, my friend, to support his ministry. In distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments. He died in prison, in tumults, in labors, in watchings, in fastings. Listen, child of God, this world is not our kingdom. This, this foolishness about your best life now by Blinky is alive the devil. Listen, I can get on here and uh, preach to you nothing but exhortation, and I too could get 20 million likes on Facebook. I'm going to preach unto you all the counsel of God, just like the Apostle Paul told the Ephesian elders in Acts chapter 20. That's the only thing that'll get the job done. Reprove, rebuke, and then exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Oh, but Blinky says, I'll never bring up anything negative. Oh, no, no, mine is a positive ministry. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 6, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness, on the right hand, and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well. We're talking about the ministry here, my friend. Paul is explaining to you what's going to take place in the New Testament ministry. We're talking about the Apostle Paul as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. 2 Corinthians 12 verse 1, It is not expedient for me doubtless to glory, I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. And my friend, he will not glory over them. He'll not be like Jesse Duplantis lying to you to sell you a video. Oh, I was taken up to the third heaven and saw Jesus. Don't even call him the Lord Jesus Christ. Saw Jesus, walked around the streets of gold with Abraham. Abraham had a big old bosom, big broad-breasted man broad-chested man. If you believe that stuff, my friend, you deserve to have your bank account stripped by those hucksters. And you can tell them I said so. Amen and amen. And you'll give an account to Almighty God for every sin that you send to those hucksters instead of taking it to a Bible-preaching church. You see, I don't believe it. You will at the judgment seat of Christ if you make it there. Now hear the Lord Jesus, about the Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 2, I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. The Apostle Paul was so humble, he would not even say it was me that was taken up into the third heaven. Can, do, do you understand whether in the body I cannot tell or whether out of the body I cannot tell? God knoweth. Such an one caught up to the third heaven. That's God's throne, my friend. You know when he was caught up to the third heaven? When they stoned him to death outside the streets of Lystra for preaching the gospel on the street. Preaching to them the Lord Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. And he says in 2 Corinthians 12, 4, how that he... Paul was caught up into paradise. 
My friend, we see right there that catching up is the same catching up of the body of Christ in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through 18. Caught up into paradise. Paradise was in the heart of the earth before the Lord Jesus Christ died, shed his life's blood. But my friend, when he ascended into heaven with his blood and applied it to the mercy seat, captivity was taken captive. Ephesians chapter 4, he led captivity captive. Paradise was taken to the third heaven. And he said, and he heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such an one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in mine infirmities. Oh, Jesse would say, hey, I'm going to sell you a video, forty nine ninety nine. tell you all about it. Line hucksters. Second Corinthians 12, verse 6, For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. For I would say the truth, I will say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth, me to be, or that he heareth of me. I'm not even going to glory in being caught up to the third heaven. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations to the church, the mysteries were given to the apostle Paul, not to Peter. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. To be buffeted, my friend, is to be wrapped with the fist by Satan. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me three times. Paul begged God, and he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. God's grace is God's strength defined right there for you. You know what you need? You don't need a healing in the body. You need God's grace and it'll be sufficient for thee. Paul said, I glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Would you rather be healed or have the power of Christ resting upon you? That's the acid test of your true spirituality, friend. Paul says, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me you remember how the holy ghost descended in the form of a dove and rested upon our lord jesus christ at his baptism paul's alluding to that second corinthians 12 10 therefore i take pleasure in infirmities he's a maniac in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong in the spirit, not in the flesh. The flesh must be subdued. 1 Corinthians 4.11, Even unto this present hour we both hunger, and thirst, and are naked, and are buffeted, and have no certain dwelling place. You know what our Lord Jesus Christ said concerning his ministry for three and a half years? He says, the foxes have holes, the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. He was a frequent visitor of Mary and Martha and Lazarus over in Bethany, across from the Mount of Olives, where he would go and spend the night with them and get rest. Matthew 26, verse 67, Then did they spit in his face, the Roman soldiers, 
spit in our Lord's face and buffeted him. My friend, they beat him with their fist. And others smote him with the palms of their hands. First Peter 2.20, For what glory is it if when you are buffeted, <clears throat> when you be buffeted for him, for your faults, ye shall take it patiently. My friend, don't, don't lash back at them. But if when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently. This is acceptable with God. 1 Thessalonians 3, 1, Wherefore, when we could no longer forbear, we thought it good to be left at Athens alone, and sent Timotheus, our brother and minister of God, and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ, to establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith, that no man should be moved by these afflictions. No man should be moved away from the hope that we have in Christ. My friend, don't think that God's against you just because of afflictions. Don't let the devil lie to you, my friend. Submit yourself to God in your affliction. For yourselves know that we are appointed thereunto. Did you get it? We're appointed thereunto to afflictions, bodily afflictions. For verily when we were with you, we told you before that we should suffer tribulation, even as it came to pass, and ye know. Listen, this world is not our home. We're just a passing through. Our treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. And my friend, the reason most Christians will not do anything for God, for their Lord, is because they know they're going to pay the price by their adversary, the devil. Are you that carnal? Are you that thin-skinned, my friend, that you can't do anything for your Lord? You need to get in the battle, get in the fight today for the Lord Jesus Christ. Do the work of an evangelist. Verse number five. An evangelist is a bringer of good tidings or news. Evangelist is the name given to New Testament heralds of salvation through Christ who, not, who are not apostles. There were only 12 foundation apostles directly chosen by our Lord Jesus in Matthew chapter 10, of whom one was a known devil. John 6, 70, Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve? And one of you is a devil. He wasn't taken by surprise. And my friend, Judas was not preordained before the foundation of the world to be a devil and to be the son of perdition and go to hell. He chose that route. He chose to receive those 30 pieces of silver, no matter what the Calvinists have to say. Matthias took Judas's place in Acts chapter 1, but the Apostle Paul was given the mysteries of the church age and all the church age doctrines. Paul is the apostle to the uncircumcision, as Peter was the apostle to the circumcision. Romans chapter 11, verse 13, For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. Galatians 2, 7, But contrariwise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me as the gospel of the circumcision or Jude, the Jews was unto Peter. Galatians 2.8 For he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles, the uncircumcision, the Gentile church. Amen. Do the work of an evangelist, child of God. Be a soul winner 
and you'll receive a soul winner's crown at the judgment seat of Christ. And you'll have something to lay at your Lord's feet at the judgment seat of Christ, my friend, when the church is judged. Now, I thank you for listening to this. We'll be continuing on in these salient verses and looking uh, at verse number six, Lord willing, in our next episode. I would just ask everyone to remember my granddaughter, Lauren Harvey, and the delivery of my great-grandson, Cohen. I thank you for listening. May the Lord bless you. Have a good day.